Welcome to our guide on achieving cinematic lighting using Marmoset Tool Bag. In today's video, we will turn this model of a healing potion and some extra props into this completed scene. We will start by importing the models into Marmoset and applying the materials. But this video focuses on the lighting and camera settings to achieve a cinematic result. We are sure that this video will help you improve the quality of your renders for your portfolio. Remember to get the project files for free from the link in the description. I included the meshes, textures, and the marmoset scene files. Let's get started. The first step is to import our 3D model into Marmoset tool bag. Go to File, select Import, and choose your model. Marmoset supports various formats, making it a breeze to bring in models from almost any 3D software. Remember, you can also drag and drop your models into the scene. With our models in place, it's time to apply the materials. Applying materials is straightforward in Marmoset. Drag and drop the materials from the material panel into the correct mesh. I created the necessary materials for the scene in advance. Shortly, we will publish another video explaining the texturing and look development of the healing potion. So, remember to subscribe to the channel to get notified when the other videos are published. Now that the materials are applied, let's move on to the composition. From now on, I will work with ray tracing enabled. Go to render and click on use ray tracing. The first thing we need to do when deciding the composition of the shot is to find the correct camera angle and focal length. An essential part of the process is experimenting with several camera angles to find the most compelling one. To help you frame your shot better, make sure to enable the safe frame option in the camera settings. Because the subject of our scene is a prop, I will place the camera at the same level as the potion. Then, following the rule of thirds, I will put the potion on the left side of the frame. Focal length can dramatically affect the feel of your scene. A longer focal length flattens the perspective, while a wider angle can exaggerate it. I will use a focal length of 120mm to flatten the scene's elements and focus the attention on the healing potion. Composition is vital in cinematic lighting. You should arrange your scene elements to guide the viewer's eye to the desired location. To change the position of the models, you can use your preferred 3D software to make the adjustments and re-export the FBX file. Here, I used Maya to change the position of this candle holder and re-import the FBX. The changes are automatically reloaded in Marmoset. The placement of the candle holder is not good. So let's move it to the previous position by making the adjustment in Maya and re-export the FBX. You can also adjust the position inside of Marmoset by selecting the meshes and using the Move, Rotate, and Scale tools. To give the scene some depth, it is important to have elements in front and behind the main subject. I will add some new elements in Maya to make a more interesting scene. A quick way to do this is to duplicate the existing assets and place them in different parts of the scene. Make sure to check the composition constantly. It is essential to mention that this process is not linear. There are many iterations. Tweak the composition, add elements, assign materials, rotate some elements, etc. This is what improves the final image. Now that the composition is in a good place, we can start lighting. I will use an HDRI from the Marmoset library to get started. This will provide a realistic lighting base that will simulate the effect of the environment in the scene. Here, I'm adjusting the intensity and rotation to match the scene's mood. Next, I will add the key light to the scene. This will aim directly at our subject. Remember to avoid using a frontal light. You need to add lights from the side to enhance the depth and volume of your object. I really like this light position. The shadows make some interesting lines transversal to the potion. But the scene is too bright. In order to keep the light intensity and control the brightness of the scene, I will add a wall with a window to let the light pass through. I will take this chance to make a wall for the background. Now, let's bring both of these elements to our scene in Marmoset. Another crucial factor in creating cinematic lighting is the softness of the shadows. Right now, the shadows are very sharp, which makes the scene look 3D and unrealistic. The lights in real life are not this sharp. Let's add some softness by increasing the light's diameter. That's it, much better. Before I forget, let's apply the materials to the recently added walls. 
Even if the wall with the window is not visible from the camera, the light will bounce from the wall into the scene. So, I also added a brick wall material. Before moving on to the secondary lights, I want to increase the ambient lighting. Let's change the HDR image and increase the brightness to 1.25. Now, we can move on to the secondary lights. I will place a light on top of each candle to emulate the light emitted by the flame. Change the light type to Omni. Adjust the position so the light is on top of the candle. Then, adjust the brightness. Because these are secondary lights, they should not stand out more than the key light. Now, let's duplicate the light for the remaining candles in the scene. This stage is an excellent moment to set up the camera and post-process effects. Let's start with depth of field. Select the camera from the scene panel. In the focus section, click on the depth of field drop-down and select ray traced. Now click the target icon next to the focus distance slider. On the viewport, click where you want to be the focus point. In this case, the focus point will be the potion. I will set the aperture to something around 4. Remember that a smaller number here will give you a shallower depth of field. Moving on to the post process. Go to the color section and click on the curves button. In my experience, a simple S curve like this one will usually do the trick. Editing the curves can take a long time to fine tune. But now I just want to add a bit of contrast to the image. Next, sharpen. This is a crucial step to make your renders pop. I recommend not to use values above 1. Bloom adds a soft glow to bright areas, giving your scene a dreamy, cinematic quality. Use it to simulate the way light interacts with an actual camera lens. I also recommend using low values. A vignette helps to focus attention on the center of the frame. Adjust the intensity and size to complement your composition. The proper intensity will change depending on your scene's mood. Here, I will use a strength of 1 and a softness of 0.22. Next, let's add some grain to our image. Change the mode to film. Adjust the grain intensity to something subtle like 0.1. For the texture of the grain effect, I like to use medium. Now that the post process is completed, let's go back and tweak the lighting. First, let's change the temperature of the key light. Click on the temperature checkbox and set the value to 3500 degrees. I want to add a blue accent on the table next to the potion. So, let's add a new spotlight and place it facing the table. Then, I will adjust the intensity and color to emulate the potion refraction. I want to create a small blue highlight in the metal part. There, that looks good. It's time to apply what we've learned and do more iterations. Usually, tutorials show a very linear and organized way of working from one step to the next. In my experience, this is not how it's done in reality. So, I wanted to show this process in the following time lapse. As you can see, I went back to fine tune the curves in the camera settings. Then, I moved the glass container closer to the camera. This way, it will be out of focus. I felt it was too bright and sharp, competing with the potion in the composition. Here, I'm rotating the sky to control the reflections on the glass objects. I also adjusted the camera angle. If you do this, make sure to update the focus distance. I continued adjusting the position of the elements to improve the composition. When I adjusted the camera, the candle holder in the back was no longer visible. So I fixed that too. The lights needed to be adjusted as well. I increased the intensity of the sky a bit. Here, I increased the emissive intensity of the potion material. This makes the potion stand out even more. I noticed some hard lines on the outline of the meshes. So, I enabled the subdivision for most of them. I continued playing with the saturation, exposure, and bloom. Then I realized some color accents were missing. I decided to quickly model some broken stones to scatter in the scene. After importing the FBX, I duplicated the potion material, adjusted some settings, and applied it to the stones. This is very close to the final image. Just a few last adjustments to the materials, exposure, and light position. 
When working, I get into a rhythm that allows me to keep going making adjustments for a long time. Maybe looking at a time lapse of the process is not as inspiring, but I wanted to show the actual process. It is done. Here is the final result. Remember to get the project files for free from the link in the description. I included the meshes, textures, and the marmoset scene files. So, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to see more content like this, thank you and until the next time.